What is going on everybody, Zionic here, and in today's video we are going to be checking out another set of battles for Go Battle League in the Ultra League by a member of the community, Jesse Pang. Now he is bringing a really awesome team of triple starters, and the highlight of this video is going to be talking about Sceptile. Sceptile recently got an upgrade in terms of Seed Bomb as a fast move. It is absolutely ridiculous when it comes to charging energy, as you guys are seeing right here. Sceptile has become a legitimate monster, guys. Honestly, in the Ultra League, as the latest update with the Grass-type moves and nerfs to Ancient Power, Sceptile definitely won, and I know a lot of you are going to be really frustrated that I'm making a video about it, um, but I just want everyone to know that it's really, really good having access to Leaf Blade, which is not Community Day, and Earthquake for that coverage to Giratina Alter to that coverage to Reggie Steel. It is really strong guys. Honestly, it is fantastic. Now, we saw what it did right there. Took both shields from the um, Swamper and then now because he has his own Swamper versus this Blaziken right here, he's going to be able to get to a Hydro Cannon. Um, but the Blaziken's getting off a charge move right here. And let's see what it is. It's going to be Brave Bird. Okay, really interesting choice right there. Does some nice neutral damage, however. But this Hydro Cannon will be taking out the Blaziken. Now he still has Charizard and Earthquake on Swampert for Reggie Steel, And he can also get to a Hydro Cannon relatively quickly because he decided to overcharge there. Now this will be taking out the Swampert. And then he can easily get to an Earthquake or his opponent decides to surrender. So awesome game one, guys. Yeah, Sceptile is definitely really good. I think that is probably top three um, of Pokemon I'm going to look to invest in for Season 2 into Ultra League this season. I picked up things like um, Articuno. I picked up Poliwrath. I picked up Yursaring. Um, but next season, I'm definitely going to be getting Sceptile. So again, we see a fantastic lead. And this core is really strong um, against that meta that we're seeing with Reggie Steels being everywhere. So it'll be really interesting to see how the rest of his battles go. Now, he's opting to stay in and go for the Blast Burn versus the Armored Mewtwo. And we are getting a bit of lag. I think his recorder might have messed up right here. But what we saw basically is he swapped into Sceptile because the Leaf Blade is going to be still doing quite a bit of damage to this Armored Mewtwo and he can spam it so quickly, guys. Honestly, it's five Seed Bombs to get to Earthquake and three Seed Bombs to get to Leaf Blade, which is just absolutely ridiculous. That is so quick. Um, seed Bomb is basically the equivalent of Snarl in terms of energy per turn. As you guys see right there, he's able to get both shields from Armored Mewtwo, which is really, really good. He can safely come in Honestly, with either Swampert or Charizard, because he knows he has um, Registeel coverage, but he's going to opt to come in with Charizard. Probably going to go for the Dragon Claw right away, which is a pretty good call. Now, he will need to shield right here. Cannot take the Psy Strike to the face, so he is going to shield, which is going to be pretty good. He's going for the Dragon Claw now, and again, he still has great coverage to that Reggie Steel, and hopefully there isn't a Grass in the back. I think that's the one trouble it would give him, but it's going to be a Lolan Muck. So, okay, he can easily go for Blast Burn right here. Um, will he shield, though? Ooh, Dark Pulse is going to do quite a bit of damage. He is going to shield, and we're going to see now the swap to Swampert. Okay, so Swampert can take um, a few hits from Dark Pulse from the Alolan Muck, but if this Alolan Muck goes for the Poison type move, it's actually going to be resisted. So when you're using Alolan Muck, guys, make sure you go for that Dark Pulse in the Swampert fight, and we see Reggie Steel come in now, and Swampert already has an Earthquake. You guys know how this is going to go. This is going to absolutely decimate the Reggie Steel, and all he needs to do is get to a Hydro Cannon before he gets to another charge movement it's going to be good to go now he will need to get to basically a hydro cannon um, to do some nice chip damage to the alolan muck coming back in if not he still has blast burn in the back so he is actually able to get to the hydro cannon in time this will not finish off the alolan muck so alolan muck is going to be able to get to the dark pulse i think Yep, he is going to be able to get to the Dark Pulse in time. But Alolan Muck definitely does not have enough energy to finish off Charizard as well. Plus, Charizard already has Charge Moves, so that is going to be a good second game. This team looks really good if you can catch those Reggie Steels, which I know a lot of players are running because Reggie Steel is fantastic in the Ultra League, guys. Great League, Ultra League, Reggie Steel is meta. So, therefore, bringing anti-meta anti in terms of Swampert, in terms of Charizard, um, is going to be really strong. So we're going to go ahead and move into game three here. Now, Jesse Peng is in rank nine. So these are really high ranked battles right here. And we'll see how game three goes. I'd love to see if he can lose lead. 
Okay, so yeah, lose lead. Charizard into Giratina altered. This is not the best, even though you do have Dragon Claw, which will be nice. Um, Giratina altered is definitely thicker than Charizard. We know that. Um, but we'll have to see how he decides to play this. I think he's going to opt to probably stay in, go for Dragon Claws, and hope to outpace Giratina altered. So let's see how this battle goes. He does get a shield from Giratina Altered, which is really, really good. Now he can come into Swampert, and if Giratina Altered decides to stay in, Swampert can handle this very well with Earthquake, but we see the swap out into Meganium. Okay, this is interesting. This is going to be really tough. He's going to go for the Earthquake. Both will be resisted because Meganium is a pure grass type, so Hydro Cannon and Earthquake will be resisted, but Earthquake will do more damage right there and the meganium is looking to completely farm down he's actually able to get to a hydro cannon as well some so some extra nice chip damage right here and he gets a shield okay that's how he's able to win his opponent shielded um, a hydro cannon his opponent definitely should not have shielded right there so one critical mistake can flip a whole game so now he's able to come into charizard he will be able to shield right here I think he should shield. No, he's opting to not shield Frenzy Plant. Ooh, man, getting the Charizard low. He's going to look to farm down. Oh, this is risky. And we see the Giratina Altered come back in. But he's going to be able to get off two Dragon Claws in a row. And we'll see Sceptile look to close this game. So hopefully he can get to two. He can get to two. He might be able to get to three. Let's see how this goes. Okay, so there's two. Getting Giratina low. He's opting to swap. Okay, great swap right there because you can get to Leaf Blade so quickly. Um, but he's going to go ahead and shield. There's no reason why he shouldn't shield. Yeah, he is going to shield right there. The Dragon Claw would definitely do quite a bit of damage. And another Dragon Claw coming through. Okay, he's not going to shield this one. He needs to save the shield in the back for potentially um, something that's like a fire type Pokemon that we'll see. Maybe a Blaziken. Um, so we see him go for the Leaf Blade right now. This Leaf Blade will be doing resisted damage, but enough to take out Giratina Altered at that range. Now we're going to see Meganium come back in. So this is where this shield will come in, even though it's going to be a Frenzy Plant and resisted. Sceptile is very squishy, so he's going to be able to farm a little bit of energy and go for Leaf Blade. Oh, we see the swap into Reggie Steel. Wow. Okay, great swap by his opponent right there to soak the Leaf Blade, but Me but Sceptile is so spammy, guys, and he still has Swampert in the back with a little bit of health. Um, or Charizard, I should say. Maybe he has Swampert. Oh, man, I forget. Okay, let's see if he decides to swap. Yeah, he has a Charizard. So he's going to swap on the charge move. Perfect swap there by Jesse Pang to soak this charge move. And then now he can go for the Leaf Blade, but he definitely needs to get more energy so that he can do a double Leaf Blade versus Meganium. So... He's going to be able to finish off the Reggie Steel with Leaf Blade right here. And then the Meganium coming back in will get a Leaf Blade to the face. So that is going to be a good game. Sceptile, man, game three, lost lead. And Sceptile definitely closed the game for him with shields down. That is absolutely fantastic to see. I cannot wait to get a Sceptile, guys. This looks really, really strong. You definitely want to protect it. Um, some of those big weaknesses are going to be like Giratina Altered, um, maybe like Articuno as well, plus those fires, Charizard, um, what have you. So you got to protect him against those. Now we see a Charizard versus a Clefable here on the lead. Clefable is a really strong lead, especially with all those Giratina leads. But we'll have to see how he decides to play it. He will be resisting the Meteor Mash, but he's got to watch out for that Psychic. That's going to do quite a bit of damage. Now he's going straight for Blast Burn. He does not want to mess around, and this is looking really, really good for him. He can completely farm down the Clefable. He can shield right here. Oh, he's not going to shield. He's going to risk it. This could... Actually, I think this is going to be Meteor Mash. Yeah, it is. Good counting there by Caleb. Um, by Caleb. So we'll have to see or by jesse i'm sorry <laughs> by jesse pang i was thinking of caleb pang the youtube content creator for pokemon go pvp so now we see a swampert come in um so this is actually a really popular team right now which is um clefable swampert and alolan muck um, run by a lot of high-end players so we'll have to see how he handles this but he's doing really well he's already got swampert to half health still has his shield and he can easily bring in the septile right here and he still has swampert for the alolan muck that is likely in the back or it might be a giratina altered so we see the septile come in septile is going to completely out spam and is going to be a melmetal actually so he's going for the earthquake now he definitely wants to get shields out of there this will definitely do a ton of damage. It goes unshielded. Wow, he doesn't shield. That is risky. Okay, so he can probably shield right here, soak the rock slide, and then just completely farm down with Seed Bomb. 
And then he's looking to swap. Oh, what a perfect swap on the rock side. Now he has loaded energy as well on the Sceptile in the back. Swampert not gonna be very effective. And then he can just go into Hydro Cannons to put a lot of pressure on this Swampert. Swampert is absolutely low. No need to shield. He can save that for his Sceptile, which has basically a Leaf Blade and a half. Oh wow, the Swampert goes for the Earthquake instead of Hydro Cannons. Interesting call, because he still have to get another Hydro Cannon off. Two Hydro Cannons would have been a little more energy efficient right there. So now we're going to see a Hydro Cannon come in. He's not going to shield. Again, he can win with Sceptile right here with fast moves alone, basically, because Seed Bomb's going to be doing super effective damage. So he is going to go for Leaf Blade, and he has another one already, basically. So we'll have to see he can give it to the back-to-back, -back, unless Sceptile has the charge move. Nope, Sceptile's... Or, um, Swampert's just going to go down there. So really good game four right there. Um, interesting lead. He really risked it and great counting with the Meteor Mash. If that was a Psychic, that would have taken out the Charizard. So we'll have to see how the final battle goes here at rank nine. Man, Subtile's absolutely deadly, guys. All right, so we see a Charizard versus a Cresselia. Now, Cresselia is thick, um, but Blast Burn's still going to do quite a bit of damage, and I think he can beat it to the charge move. He's got to watch out for that future sight that could it could have, um, and Moonblast as well is going to do quite a bit of damage, but it doesn't really need to worry about the Aurora Beam. So he is going to get off a of Blast Burn, take out a, quite a bit of health. I think this is going to be Aurora Beam coming in. He's not going to shield. Yeah, it is going to be the Aurora Beam. As you guys can see, um, it's neutral because of the Flying Fire type. Now he, oh man, Swampert comes in, he goes straight into Sceptile. This is deadly. He doesn't need to shield. Hydro Cannon, Earthquake won't do a lot of damage. Both will be resisted. Um, even though Sceptile is a Grass type, it still gets hurt by that Hydro Cannon. As you guys saw, it does little under a third, basically, maybe a quarter. Yeah, about, about a third, actually. So now he's going to be able to get to Leaf Blades. He has two stored up. We'll have to see if his opponent decides to shield right here. It'd be really risky to shield. He does shield. Now he can go for another Leaf Blade right away. Um, again, forcing his opponent's hand. Does he want to risk that second shield coming in, or is he going to let it go down? He's going to risk the second shield. Really interesting call because he can safely shield right here and take out the Swampert with ease. Swampert cannot outpace a Sceptile in terms of charge moves, and we see the swap now to Typhlosion. Will he get the Earthquake? He gets the Earthquake in time. Typhlosion is going to basically get one shot right here. We'll have to see how much damage this does. Yep, one shots the Typhlosion. Man, Sceptile is absolutely ridiculous. All right, so now he has his own Swampert right here. Swampert does have a ton of energy, but all he has to do is land one Hydro Cannon. Um, the opponent Swampert probably has enough energy for back-to-pack -back Hydro Cannons right now, but there's no need to shield. Yeah, he's able to get to it in time, and then he still has a shield plus Charizard to take out the Cresselia, so this is going to be a good game, but... Sceptile is putting on a clinic right here, guys. This is awesome to see. We're going to see the Cresselia come in, go for the Hydro Cannon, and we'll likely see a swap to Charizard to flex. We'll have to see. Does he do the flex? No, he's just going to stay in with Swampert and finish off with Hydro Cannon. He can safely shield right here. Um, again, Cresselia is the final Pokemon, so this is, man, this was really awesome to see. Great showcase, um, Jesse Pang on uh, using Sceptile and Triple Starter, so no Legendaries, no Giratina, no Articuno, no Cresselias, Armored Mewtwo's, Triple Starter, so really awesome. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and like always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.